The role of artificial intelligence in environmental science has been one of tremendous growth uh, over the past five to 10 years. What's really uh, unique about this time period is that we, we have this intersection of uh, computing power and the right kinds of tools and the ability to store data uh, that's allowing us to do really big problems with very large data sets. AI2ES is a brand new type of institute. Uh, we aim at building trustworthy AI, a whole process, a whole cycle from the development of the models, their applications, and how people are using them. And we're doing it for weather, climate, and coastal. We're going to have a truly personal relationship with our weather. We're going to be able to be able to get an accurate, trustworthy prediction out of our phone and we're gonna be able to know what's gonna happen around us. We're gonna be able to improve our understanding of how the climate is changing and all of that. There's going to be a true revolution in how these models can be able to predict everything because that's a lot of what we're developing. The Institute pulls together some of the country's top experts in weather, climate, and coastal oceanography from universities and national labs. It's a really impressive group. And one thing that's especially exciting is the emphasis on trustworthy AI, which requires integrating the work of explainable AI computer scientists with social scientists and meteorologists to make meaningful advances in several application domains important to society. The different sites have different uh, expertise, different kinds of capabilities. I'm, I'm working with the, the folks up at the University of Albany and they collect a tremendous amount of data from across the state, uh, including uh, things like wind speed and temperature and pressure, as well as image data. And they're trying to use that to, uh, to solve a variety of different kinds of problems, including the weather prediction kinds of problems, but uh, also to give uh, groups like the Department of Transportation critical information about uh, when is uh, the precipitation transitioning from rain to snow. A key application that we're working on is predicting coastal fog. This is important for ports. We have one of the largest ports in the United States in Corpus Christi, but we'll be applying it to all ports in the US. And so AI2ES uh, is allowing us to develop a new kind of model to provide better prediction and better manage the impact of those uh, weather events. Let's talk about the turtles on the beach. Um, in Texas, you're allowed to drive on the beach, and there are these turtles that are endangered, and when they come up to nest, they get into this state where they don't really sense anything around them, and they tend to nest right where the trucks are driving over them. So if we could use something like an AI on a UAV to detect when the turtles have come in, we could stop the driving for a while, and then the turtles would be able to lay their eggs. The humans would come in and collect the eggs so that they're saved, and then they reopen the beaches, and we would save this endangered species. At the University of Oklahoma, our biggest application of artificial intelligence is in severe storms, in what we call just convection. We focus on applying advanced techniques to understand problems like, is this storm going to produce a tornado in the next hour? Is this particular environment uh, conducive to severe hail? My role and involvement in the Institute is primarily connected with uh, pred predictive models and their robustness guarantees. Really, our models can benefit a lot uh, from work that has been done uh, in adversarial machine learning. We can uh, integrate them into our models and therefore be more confident about the predictions that we make uh, in the future. I'm co-leading the risk communication research effort of the Institute. And the idea of the risk communication research is that we take a holistic approach of trying to understand users' decision context. And that includes their roles, their goals, their values, their needs, what barriers they encounter, and so forth. A very cool part of AI2ES, uh, uh, particularly here in South Texas, is we have a lot of students involved. AI2ES is built on cycles and one is workforce development. Del Mar is setting up the first community college program in artificial intelligence, and we're working with them and we're establishing a cycle where the students at Del Mar then can go on to do research at a and Corpus Christi, can have internships at our private sector partners, IBM, Google, and NVIDIA, uh, and then uh, go on to careers in AI. We, we, uh, we're creating the future leaders of AI, and some of them will come from South Texas. Not only do we have students that are dual credit, high school students, uh, first-time college students, 
students, we have many returning students that already have a bachelor's or a master's or even a PhD, and so they come back to Corpus Christi so they can acquire an award, a certificate, or even a degree within the technology of geospatial technologies, like in the AI2ES program that we have, so they can utilize that within a, in their subject area of expertise so they can then do their job better. The most fascinating thing that I've learned so far um, in doing the AI2ES has really been the fact that somebody like me with minimal computer experience can actually utilize artificial intelligence. I didn't think that was something that was possible. The more ideas, the more unique people we bring in, the more interesting solutions we're going to find to all these problems. As our climate is changing, our environment is changing, our severe weather is changing, we need to find interesting solutions to make us more resilient to all of this. And to do that, we need a variety of ideas.